from the Nick and Izzy Network Studios in New York, this is The Hirsch Show. Tonight's guest from Bear in the Big Blue House, Noel McNeil. And now, here's your host, Kyle Hershon. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Hirsch Show. Uh, my name is Kyle Hershon. I am your host. And thanks for checking out our last episode with uh, Dream Street's Greg Raposo. If you've missed that episode, you can check it out at The Hirsch Show on Facebook, on Twitter as well. And if you want to listen to the audio version of it as well, you can listen to it on buzzsprout.com. Uh, we've got a treat for you today. Uh, my guest today has made millions of children around the world, including myself, very happy and even smarter uh, with, uh, you know, whenever we were told to either just say ow or do the bear cha-cha-cha from the iconic t- uh, children's television series. Please welcome Mr. Noel McNeil. Hello. <laughs> so, Noel, uh, for those who don't know who you are, you were the voice and the operator of said bear, right? Right. I've never heard the term operator. Usually it's puppeteer. But, yes, I guess it was the, the operator. That was the guy inside. <laughs> exactly. And I was doing his voice and manipulating him at the same time. So, yes. Yeah. That was How did the- that work? How did that work? Did you have, like, one hand up here and you had another arm, like, controlling the arm? <laughs> yeah, I call it the big bird technology because it was the same way that uh carol spinney did big bird and he was my mentor so he pretty much taught me like everything it was to know about body puppetry but wow. it's the same thing so was, i would have like a little tv set like strapped to my chest with a microphone and i would look down and i would see bear so what you saw at home that's what i saw wow I down and that was my only vision i couldn't see out so i saw bear and then my Right arm went up into his neck, into the head, and this little finger did like the eyebrows. Oh, wow. And then my left hand went into his left hand. And then if you look now on all those like videos, you might notice that there was a very, very thin concealed string yeah. from his wrist going through this ring to the other hand that was stuffed. So this way, when I moved the left one, it was just counter-levered. That's so, so cool. And we had different lengths. So like when Bear would do a song and his dance, then we would use a shorter uh, mono thread. So this gotcha. way, no matter what I did, it would always like went up and down. So Gotcha. Especially like when doing the Bear Cha-Cha-Cha, you know, you have to have those fast arm movements and stuff. Yes, exactly. Just keep it, keep it going. <laughs> Just keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> so for some of our viewers and listeners that may not necessarily know who you are, your likeness and all that stuff, tell us what was what else was on your resume besides Bear? Uh, before Bear, I'd been um, pretty much, I'm proud to say that my resume is most people's childhood memory. So I've been doing this way too long. <laughs> so I actually started on uh, Sesame Street. I actually started as the Wrangler, the person who takes care of the puppets. Okay. And then I transitioned to like a background performer. So I was like, you know, an anything Muppet in the background or a second chicken from the left or a third grouch from the right or uh, assisting the other puppeteers. And then my first actually starring role in a series was this Nickelodeon series called Eureka's Castle, which premiered in 1989. And I was Magellan, the dragon, who was a body puppet too. He was like, what's, like, what's uh, what we call it? Like, uh, he was like half body. So you never saw his legs. Right. You saw him from the waist up, but he operated the same way. And I would put my arm up inside his head and my other hand inside uh, his hand. And again, had low monitor strapped to my chest and only way i could see out that's it <laughs> had no other way no other vision <laughs> thank god you didn't like what i saw <laughs> thank god you didn't like run into anything i'm sure that may have happened but we never saw it right no and actually with um magellan um the other puppeteers well, they were hand puppets and so they actually stood and held the puppets over their head so magellan i was actually on these platforms that were like strung together and it had these boards on the sides this way i could feel with my feet Mm. not to take too many steps to the right or to the left okay Uh, yeah and the same thing with uh with bear because the entire set the entire house was actually raised up on this platform that was like four and a half feet high wow so you could pop pieces of the floor out so the puppeteers could stand inside and hold the puppets up and then bear could stand next to them but again they had these like little boards on the end so this way when i walked my feet could stop and i right. didn't like you know 
crush my co-stars. So yeah, I, I never really thought of that because I'm like, there's no way Bear could go like this and see Tutter just all the way down the floor. <laughs> exactly. So it was like, you know, it's like one of those times where like, you know, Tutter's obviously, you know, standing on stilts or <laughs> you know, with like very stretchable legs that he has. So <laughs> You know, speaking about Eureka's Castle, there's there's an interesting story uh, that kind of relates to what I've seen. One of the uh, sometimes I think you've had like guests on and uh, there was one <laughs> band that came on called I think they were called uh, Squeaky Clean. Yes. Um, and, uh, they, you know, every time they would come to my school all the time and they would do like concerts and it'd be like the Beatles. I mean, everybody would start screaming and it's just like, okay, it's a, it's a husband and wife duo, one with an upright bass, one with a, uh, Gretsch, George, uh, Harrison style guitar. And, you right. know, it's a, everybody's jumping up and down like biblical locusts, <laughs> and, you know, and, and then I see, you know, them performing on Eureka's castle. I'm like, that guy sounds familiar. And of course I did my research. I'm like, Oh, it's bear. <laughs> oh, that guy. Yeah, so there was a, t there was a time in, uh, uh, cause bear premiered in 1997 and, uh, Eureka's castle was still, uh, running on Nickelodeon. Oh, really? On in like 19, we, we did our second season in 1990 and the three specials. And then that was it, but they just kept, running it right and then the other series that i worked on in the mid 90s which premiered 95 was called the puzzle place and so okay. i was a character on the puzzle place and named uh, leon who was from new york he was like a little kid right so at some point around like 1998 1999 um here in new york at least mm -hmm. at 10 a.m all three shows were on at the same time for like <laughs> over a year so i could <laughs> Switch from like the Disney Channel with Bear to Channel 13 with Puzzle Place to Nickelodeon to see Magellan. So I, I, so I was pretty much running the gamut from A to A minor. Just, <laughs> I'm a bear. I'm a dragon. I'm a kid. That's, you know, that's it. So it's like. <laughs> and, yeah. and then at some point you were uh, Keiko from, from Ubi. Yes. I, I, for, you know, as a kid, I'm like, once again, that sounds familiar. And I never really thought about it until maybe today <laughs> <laughs> putting the piece together wait a minute yeah <laughs> this guy's everywhere this guy <laughs> this guy was my childhood there was no show he wasn't on <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> and you know most recently you've been active on tiktok and uh, instagram you know you were doing a lot of a lot of stuff and then you know you have a little bear puppet i mean even cameos what's like the typical reaction you get from you know people watching this my son, who's 15, going on 42, he <laughs> says he wishes we could get a dollar for every time the word childhood is mentioned. <laughs> it's like, oh, you were my childhood. Thank you for my childhood. This reminds me of childhood. Oh, I haven't seen this since childhood. <laughs> just like, <laughs> again and again and again. <laughs> but it just never gets old, right? No, no, exactly. And now, like, the kids who watch Bear are now having their own kids. So now I'm getting, like, because I do um, requests on Cameo. Yes. And now they like are introducing their kids to Bear. So starting like a whole new generation visiting the Big Blue House. Um, yeah, now there's this, there's this big trend of nostalgic, uh, you know, especially, you know, children's shows, because I've seen people like Bob West. Uh, you know, I, I saw you were recently on uh, Carrie Stinson's podcast, Purple Roads. Yes. Uh, you know, it, it's so, there's so many things going back to, I mean, I was born at the tail end of 96, so I was just around when the, the beginning of Bear started. So, I mean, this was like, once again, my childhood, but dang a dollar. <laughs> <Thank you>. um, <laughs> and so what, what got you hooked on to puppets and puppetry as, as an art form in itself? Um, when I was growing up in uh, New York City in central Harlem, um, there were much more puppet shows on TV when I was growing up. Um, there was like Captain Kangaroo, there was Mr. Rogers, there was Sherry Lewis, and her uh, ventriloquist sock puppet named Lamb Chop. Yep, Lamb Chop. Uh, there was another ventriloquist, Paul Winchell, and he had a show called Winchell Mahoney Time, with <laughs> Jerry Mahoney. And Paul Winchell later on became uh, the voice of Tigger, the original voice of Tigger for the Winnie the Pooh right. uh, cartoons. And he also invented the artificial heart. 
So puppetry saves hmm. lives. So I'm a trivia yeah. guy, so now I could use that. There you go. So <laughs> next trivia night, when you're allowed back inside the bar, use that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then uh, when I was like really little, that's when on Channel 13, the public television station here, there yeah. was this special half hour special introducing this brand new show coming on tomorrow morning called Sesame Street. And it Ooh. was introduced by two puppets. I'd never seen that kind before. And one, his head was kind of shaped like a banana and the other one was kind of shaped like a football. And the names <laughs> were, of course, Bert and Ernie. They showed scenes from Sesame Street, including Big Bird at that time, which was just amazing that this puppet, could, this huge character could actually walk around and talk at the same time. And it was, it was astonishing. I'd never seen that before. If you want to see something truly frightening, kids, go to YouTube, type in Big Bird first Sesame Street episode, and you'll see a, a Big Bird that is nowhere near yeah. the Big Bird you grew up with. <laughs> no, because it's like, when I see it, I see like, you know, he's bobbing his head. He sounds like goofy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then that's when um, the, the, um, Carol Spinney, who did Big Bird, suggested to the writers, you know, why don't we have him reflect the audience? Like, because at that time, it, it, you know, Sesame Street was geared for three to six year olds. Right. And so Carol suggested, why don't we make him like a six year old? So that's when Carol developed a much younger, sweeter voice. And then design wise, they just like smoothed out like everything. So this way, Big Bird was much more presentable. Exactly. Same thing with Snuffy. You ever see Snuffy's first appearance? <laughs> That will cause nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> Change him too. So <laughs> I'll, I'll be sure to show my four-year-old niece about that. <laughs> yes, exactly. This is not the snuffy you remember. No. <laughs> and, and what made you think that, you know, puppetry could, you know, be something you could do for the rest of your life? Um, well, by the time I was in high school and trying to figure out like college and all that. That's when that was the height of the the Muppet Show, right? And I saw, and even before that, I was watching Jim Henson and the Muppets make appearances on all these shows and doing specials like the Frog Prince and Hey Cinderella and the Bremontown Musicians and yeah. uh, the Great Santa Claus Switch and and then of course I kept watching Sesame Street even though I knew the alphabet by the time I got to high school. Oh so, yeah, thank you New York City Public Schools. Thank and you. so. <laughs> At that point, that's when I realized, like, they're doing this half-hour variety show. I thought, well, maybe I could do this for a living because Jim Henson's doing it and all these people are doing it. So mm -hmm. I, uh, I did research the old-fashioned way. Back then, there was no internet or no. computer or Google. So I had to go to the library, which <laughs> is still around, by the way. It's like yes, Barnes & Noble, but it's free. Yeah. <laughs> and I went in, I did this research, and I found two colleges here on the East Coast, one is in the University, uh, the University of Connecticut in Storrs, Connecticut, which to this day still has a four-year puppetry program where you can get your mm. master's degree in puppetry. And the other was here in Brooklyn and it's Pratt Institute. And at that time, there was a theater department. It's not there anymore, but there was a theater department. And within the theater department was a puppetry course okay. taught by one of the designers and builders of the Muppets. Of, in fact, he built... Uh, Big Bird and Snuffy and his name was uh, Kermit Love and no the frog was not named after him. So I figured yeah I've heard the name before. Yeah. Uh, so I had everything all set up or like all my research ready and I was going to present it to my mom. Now my mom was a single mom because my father left us walked out on us when I was 18 months old Oof. and so she was uh, raising me and taking care of her mom and her uncle and working down two jobs and making sure that I went to a private school to get a proper education. So now I'm presenting this to this single woman who works like seven days a week. And I said, okay, I know what I want to do. I want to be a puppeteer. <laughs> Back it away in case yes. she brings out the shoe. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she said, okay, what do we have to do? And I said, oh, okay, well, I've got this school. And I got this school. So, okay, what do we have to do? It's like, well, this one requires this, and this one requires that by that time. Okay, what do we have to do? That's all she kept saying. She wow. never belittled it. She never dismissed it. She never said had a backup. She's always told me, because she was a typist for like 30 years, like wow. in, a, in a private secretary. And so she said, don't get a job. You can always get a job. Get right. a career. 
And so that's what I set out to do. And she said, and if tomorrow you want to become a lumberjack, we'll figure out how to do that. So. <laughs> I think that's really cool, you know, having a supportive parent, you know, like that at all. Because unfortunately, there there's a, somewhat of a big stigma. You know, you there are some parents out there that you know, they want them to do what they want to do, but not what the child wants to do. Unfortunately, yeah. you don't see that much. No, you don't. So I was very, very lucky that I had somebody who supported me right out the gate, and also very gratifying that she got to see how much I succeeded. So exactly, I mean, doing it. So. I mean, you got to go all over the country in this giant bear. Uh, you got to go to baseball stadiums, uh, <laughs> malls. I mean, there was, I remember, I don't know if, if it was you in the suit, but there was a Target that opened up in like 98 or something. And I was like maybe two or something years old. My mom takes me and, you know, we're taking pictures with, with bear. I, I doubt that was you in it. Um. I don't know. I mean, I did do like store appearances. Like, yeah, I mean, because the early days. So, they, do you know where where the target was? This was in Comac on Long Island. I'm a New uh, Yorker, so. Oh, yeah. okay. So it probably wasn't me because it was what was called there was PR bear, the public relations bear, right? Who would go and uh, he wasn't allowed to talk, so he could just like smile and like. That's probably what wave. it was. But I did do store openings. In fact. Um, when they, when um, the bear products started to come out, I would do right. openings. And there was, at that time, uh, there was the, the Disney store, the flagship Disney right. store on Fifth Avenue. It was this huge, beautiful store um, on Fifth Avenue, like with three stories. And uh, yeah. you could actually, on the um, third floor, like look down and see the second floor. And they wanted bear to make an appearance there to help promote like this, the product lines that was coming right. out. And so... Um, they advertised it to other Disney stores in the tri-state area. Right. And so, you know, with little flyers, like, come on this day to New York's Disney store, meet Bear. And so I, my Wrangler, like, showed up early to set things up. And they walked us through, and they had this, like, like little, you know, dry erase board with the plan up. And, like, people could line up here, and we'll give them numbers. So this way, if they want to go browse, they can come back, and they'll know what spot they're in line. Right. And, and my Wrangler and I are like, uh-huh, okay, sure. <laughs> so it's like, how, how many uh -huh. people did you expect to show up? Well, they expected about, like, maybe two to 300 people. Right. Over 2,000 people showed up. Of course. To the point where they had to close the store twice <laughs> and not let anybody else in. So this is the problem with some of these stores. <clears throat> they, they completely underestimate some of this stuff. You know, with the, this is a new thing that's become so popular. And not, not, not for nothing, I have pop right here. So, I mean. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know, we, have, we got a bunch of... Uh, bear stuff and we we like sold it all because I was getting too old but then you know we, we, we kept <laughs> out of all the things we kept pop <laughs> pop is cool <laughs> cool yeah screw you Pip <laughs> <laughs> which mom would say uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean you know this the, you know this was something that I'm sure everybody wanted to see I mean because I was also checking out uh P purple roads with uh bob west you know as a guest and you know they, they the same scenario happened when you know they expected a couple hundred people at a mall but yet like six thousand people showed up at a mall you know yes. just to just see barney um yeah people would i did an appearance at um feo swartz because they had a whole bear line feo swartz and um i did a certain like amount of time of like meeting and greeting and <laughs> then like that was it and like bears started to walk away and i could hear it's like some sort of commotion. I looked Ooh. back and and um, I saw this like dad with his kid and he was arguing with everybody. So Bear just like walked back over. <laughs> 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 it turns out this man had driven like two hours oh, with his really? kid to see Bear. <laughs> and Bear put his his hand on his shoulder like, hello, how are you? Thank you so much for coming today. <laughs> like, Would you mind taking a picture with me? <laughs> and afterwards, he just like, he said to the bear, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> and they, they didn't believe that it, that it was really you. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it's just like, well, it was like one of those things where, I mean, when I, I'm, you know, I'm bear, so I was allowed to talk. Right. For, um, 
after the popularity of it, we, I always wondered, and Muppets was wondering too, like, oh, Henson was wondering too, like, what, what could, could there be an attraction at Disney World mm. there? And so I uh, would always go to Disney World for New Year's with my family. And I said to um, Henson, um, you know what, if I'm going to be down for New Year's, if you send like Bear Down and with Andrea, that while I'm my wrangler then, um, I'll do a meet and greet and we'll just test the waters and just see if, it'll, if it would be popular. And they were like, really? It's like, yeah, just do it. So they did. They sent it, sent them down. Uh, we were staying at the Yacht and Beach Club. They put up Andrea over at the boardwalk. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> of course. Of course. And uh, so then we just did this, like, not not announced or anything. We did it at the studios because it was it was it was figured that of all the parks, Bear would most fit best at the studios. Yeah. Since it was a TV show, and so have it at the studios. Plus, the studios needed more, like, kid-friendly stuff. Yeah. So, um, so then I got dressed, and then there's that, there was this wall, this space between the, the Chinese theater and the entrance to the animation court. So this okay. is this, this wall, just a bare wall. And I walk around the corner, and I stand in front, Bear stands in front of the wall, and then the two people from Henson and uh, Brick Bell, who's like one of, the, I call him like the power of the plaid. He's one of the, the plaid people. That, right. You know, pretty much yeah, the, the, the suits. The, yeah. And it was there. And he stood on the side there. And Bear just like stood there. And I didn't, we didn't announce him. We just like stood there. And and people were like walked by, like heading towards, you know, the animation. You see like the Little Mermaid or something. Mm-hmm. They look over and they just do this double take. <laughs> and then people just started running over. <laughs> <laughs> And so, so Bear's just like, hi, how are you? It's just like hugging, like hugging the kids, taking pictures and like going, next person come. Out of nowhere, this person from the park, this Disney person from mm-hmm. studios comes over, sees what's happening, leans in so I can hear and says, you're not supposed to talk. And Bear turns and looks at him and says, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And he looks up at Bear, you're not allowed to talk. And, I, and Bear says, sure I can. Watch me. <laughs> he oh. like, turns away and just continues <laughs> on. <laughs> they, so, they had no clue that it was the actual no. actor. And so that's why they went to like the Henson people and to Brick. And it's like, he, he's like, he's not allowed to talk. And they said, no, it, it's Bear. It's okay. And the guy says, no, 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 he's not. No, he's not allowed to talk. Thinking like, it's like a bear. And they said, no, it's the bear yeah. from the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and I think I actually ended up taking a picture with him before I left. <laughs> Was yeah. he like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean yeah. to. <laughs> so then after that, that's when um, uh, V Corp. V Corp was this sh- um, company that did all the, the live shows during right. the day. They did Sesame Street Live and, you know, Holiday on Ice and all those shows. And so they were also wanting to test the waters. Like, could there be a bear live show? So they did, they started off small. They did like a mall show, like this little, like, version of the house that could actually, like, open up. Right. And had bear and then had puppet versions of the puppets because that was the one thing that, um, we didn't want to have like these like mutated like Chippendale sized oh yeah pip and pops <laughs> and like no no it's like keep them puppets because that's where they recognize them right we traveled around the country and it was a huge hit and so Disney just bought the show they just bought that set and just put it into I think it was like stage five and they called it Bear in the Big Blue House live on stage. And they just had it there, and it was a huge success. It was like it was like no question. It like, was there for like many many years. It was there for many years because it was there for many many years. And then somebody at Disney got the broad idea. It's like, hey, we got these other shows on Disney Channel. Yeah, Maybe we could use the Bear Show to promote them as well. So mm-hmm. it was like so 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 suddenly like squeezing yeah. in all these other shows into the show. <laughs> so Bear like started the show and Bear and Luna wrapped up the show, but then there's all these other little shows. Yeah, like then you get uh, the Book of Pooh and, yeah, and Mickey Mouse or whatever. Mickey Mouse, and, Clubhouse. Yeah, it's like all that stuff. And then 
once uh, Bear went off the air, that's when they took Bear out and it became um, Playhouse Disney live on stage. And right. They kept it going for forever. So, yeah, it lasted, it lasted I think, overall, the, the puppet show entity lasted about 15 years. Wow. Uh, it started at Disney World, then it went to Disneyland, and then Disneyland closed it, and then finally Disney World closed it. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Shit happens. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah, so it's like, but yeah, it always like threw people when uh, Bear would actually like talk to them. And now it's like when uh, I, you know, people find out I'm, I'm, I'm Bear. They're like, no, really? Oh my gosh, you're my childhood. It's like really, and like, the, like there's a doubt. It's like, it's like, no, you're kidding. And I, I would say like, you know, I could lie about many things. This is not one of them. No, because <laughs> Bear, that that's your voice. You didn't yeah. like manipulate it well it's just like i do it's like a certain inflection i have it was right you, 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 I, you're I more soothing it, i called it my uncle no tone because whenever <laughs> i would visit friends of mine because back then i was single so whenever i visit friends who had kids <laughs> i would just go into uncle no mode and like okay what do you want to do and do it and now and then then i became a dad so it became that same kind of thing so right. there's and bear is like the ultimate caregiver he is like what every parent strives to be <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it, it, but you know you're not the typical parent isn't wrangling a, a monkey a, a bear cub and a mouse so. yes <laughs> and trying to do other things because that was the formula of the show it was called uh there, there actually was like a, a pattern to the show right and uh, the writing was called for um bearus interruptus because bear would always have a plan at the beginning of the show at the beginning of his day and it would always be interrupted Constantly, <laughs> and, then, and then yeah, the, it's like Tutter would have a problem, then Ojo would have a problem, the uh, would have a problem, yeah, and, and then are oh, we hearing laughter? Oh, it must be Shadow. Hey, yeah, why don't we find her. Sure, <laughs> I'm getting nothing done today. Sure, let's go find Shadow. <laughs> yeah, let's just do this. Uh, let's I mean, do I, this. <laughs> my my day's been ruined anyway, so why not? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the heck? You know? So it's like when you, it's like, do you still like? take like look back and like watch some of the show um every now and then when like a, a clip pops up like on facebook or on um youtube or, or um, twitter now people like right. discovering it and sometimes i watch it and go like and have no memory like whatsoever <laughs> of having done that <laughs> and i'm looking like oh okay <laughs> sure i did that yeah because yeah. because the other thing was um i i couldn't like take my script inside. I couldn't keep right. it up inside anything. So I had to memorize everything. Right. So it's pretty much what I called garbage memory, where <laughs> you just like memorize exactly what you need for this particular scene. And then once it's done, just like throw it away. Yeah, just you don't need to do it for anymore. For the next one, yeah, just like, so a lot of times people say, oh, I remember that show and you did this or that song, you did this. And I'll say, honestly, no, I <laughs> don't. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like especially during yeah, that's all the titles of episodes it's like i have no idea what i have no idea what it was about <laughs> <laughs> and it, like especially you know if you finish the scene and god forbid you they have to do a pickup and you throw you're already throwing it out and like oh crap i gotta do it again <laughs> yeah, just like one more time yeah so, one more time yeah so it's so, fine so it's like in your mind what do you think when you hear this when you hear this guitar intro what is going through your mind Really cool rock concert coming up. Um, <laughs> nice riff, <laughs> but it's 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 pretty much like it's so nice. First of all, the the theme was written by Peter Lurie, who's like a master of children's like TV themes. He wrote the original good version of the Magic School Bus. So when you see right. the classic Magic School Bus, Peter Lurie wrote that. Peter was also the music director on Eureka's Castle. And so he became the music director on Bear. So he wrote the theme and he also wrote, you know, the classic goodbye song, mm -hmm. like the, the, the most beautiful, saddest song you'll ever hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh. yeah, so now those, those, those little strums, it's kind of like, you know, there are certain songs, certain themes, when you hear certain notes, you immediately know what it is like. Da -da. Da -da. Yeah, exactly. Da -da. So that's what it is now. So when you, if you hear that, so many like, you know, kids 
who've grown up with bear will suddenly be like, oh my God, <laughs> it's my childhood. <laughs> Another dollar. Yeah. <laughs> now I, I want to shift gears and I want to talk about something that you've been working on for many, uh, for actually, I don't know how long you've been working on. It's called the show me show. Yes, I've been working on it for many years. <laughs> so now the premise of this, this is meant for children that have special needs and autism. And I find that very interesting because there are not many shows that are willing to tackle this sort of issue. I mean, Sesame Street's done it, but nobody else that I've seen has tackled this important thing. Because, you know, because now the number of cases of autism is going up. Yes. So that means, you know, a higher population. I mean, I'm one of those. So, you know. Right. So yeah, and then in um, and Sesame Street uh, has they have Julia, and so yes. they make people aware of autism and of people with autistic and special needs, so that when Julia, you know, acts a certain way, then you know, in case somebody else you know happens to act that way, now you know why because yeah, and so it's an awareness thing. But my show would be the show Julia would watch because it's it would be it's going to be for kids um, with autism and special needs and so and, and and pretty much any kid could watch it but it's specifically for kids with autism and special needs and just helping them cope with stuff that all kids should learn but for them it's a little more challenging like um, personal space um, change of plans, uh, recognizing emotions in themselves and in other people, uh, taking turns. And so uh, um, I've been working on this for many years. And I have a channel on YouTube, the Show Me Show channel. And I've been putting up little videos just to give uh, an idea of like what the show would uh, be like. So any luck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> be a series. You know, it's <laughs> and, like... And, and, and it's a niche market now because so many times... Um, a show has to be like, you know, um, for a broad audience. And it's like, this one is for a niche audience. I think that's the new thing now. It's like, I think so like too. A yeah. niche audience. So it's like a specific audience and that's fine. And as you said, because of the fact that the numbers keep rising, um, there's always going to be an audience. I mean, I got the idea because so many parents of autism and special needs kids wrote me fan mail thanking me for bear and how their kids you know grown up still will watch the show and it's still very comforting for them on dvd or the vhs tape that they still have and i realized the networks aren't going to do a show like this like bear or mr rogers like anytime soon so that's why i'm trying so yeah i mean i don't know if anyone's told you but you know bear to me was like the Fred Rogers of puppets or the Bob Ross of puppets, you know, <laughs> it's like I could have it on in the background, you know, when I'm, you know, suffering from insomnia or whatever, and that'll put me to sleep because, you know, Bear was just so calming. Um, I you don't know. know how to take that. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, I thought our shows were much more interesting than that, but okay. <laughs> well, it, it depends on the episode. This yeah, yeah. Well, there were a couple of snoozers, I'll admit. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one was called The Big Sleep, so it was about a sleep. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, I remember that one. That was a good one. <laughs> oh, I, th I, I think my favorite episode was uh, the the house the house call when uh, Doctor Doc Hog, Hog. Yes, yeah, Doc, Doc Hog, Hog came in and uh, Ojo was afraid to get shots and and that was I was Ojo for many years. I hated getting vaccines, but you know now it's just like eh. yeah. And uh, pretty soon, like if you remember the song, like just say out, like yeah. You know, it's going to come in handy very soon once those it, vaccines start rolling out. So Exactly. <laughs> you, know, you know, now that everybody's in quarantine, you know, you've been, you know, in quarantine for, you know, the, this whole time we've all been, um, you know, you've been taking advantage of, you know, doing the cameos, doing the TikToks, you know, it, 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 you know, and I follow you on TikTok as well. I mean, you know, and I see just uh, some amazing stuff, you know, at the, the bear wearing the mask and everything you know we need something like this on television as well this is a current issue and unfortunately unlike you know sesame street that's the only show that's really producing something like this so yeah i, I think now you know since kids were born in this era and it's gonna be with us for quite a long time and i hate to admit that uh you know we need yeah. to let these people these kids know that you know that hey 
this is just a bump in the road. If we do this, this, and this, we'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. You know? So I don't know what... I don't know what they'll be calling this generation because every generation seems to have a title. So it might be generation M for mask or yeah. generation, you know, like C for COVID or something, but I'll right. have like some sort of tagline, but there, I see so many like little kids, like, uh, like toddlers, you know, wearing the masks. And I'm, I'm wondering like, uh, you know, a lot of them, don't see smiles anymore yeah. like walking down the street. And so um, occasionally I'll see like a little kid and like passing by and I'll just like, I'll raise my eyebrows and I'll just like, you know, with my mask on, just like wave. Yeah. And the kids will wave back or sometimes I'll look and the kid will wave first, just like being friendly and just like waving. So it's just there like, yeah. Know. So yeah. So it's like not stopping you, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's uh, and also, the, and, and, and then too, um, one of the issues for autistic and special needs kids and adults is, um, is is sensory and touch and having something like touching them. And so putting a mask on has been a very big issue for people this whole time and yeah. the different strategies that have gone into helping like ease into that because it is necessary, but for someone who has sensory issues, like how do you do that? So they have been online, like different steps and different techniques to like help get them accustomed to it so and as, as well as um you know change of plans because you know routine is very important and exactly. then suddenly you know being quarantined being locked down like you can't go outside you can't go to the playground you can't do the usual things you would do each day right and so dealing with that has been hard for everybody but extra hard for you know people with autism and special needs and then for the their loved ones as well. So it's been a challenging time, which is the understatement of, of the year. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to get through it. And Bear's going to fix it all. Yes. <laughs> oh, Look man. at my crook, he is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is the Hearst Show on the Nick and Daisy Network. Noel McNeil, I, I want to thank you so much for taking your time and uh, speaking with me tonight. Uh, it's been a big, big pleasure and what, uh, somewhat of an honor. <laughs> as, some, as once again, here's another dollar. Someone <laughs> who grew up in my childhood. Well, the childhood. I mean, that's what's been so nice is like with the TikTok and the, the cameos. Also, I have like my podcast called yes. Noel's Book Nook. And somebody tweeted today that, um, you know, after like, recent events of just like living in America, they were going to like listen to my podcast and just listen to Bear's voice, tell them a story before bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> That's what just, I mean, just, right? right? They just need it right now. So yeah, yeah especially after great. the last couple of days. Of, oof. Yeesh. Right. So by the way, Kyle, Oh God, there he is. <laughs> this was really nice. Thank you so much. Oh my God. <sighs> you are smelling really good. Oh, thank you, Bear. Oh, my God. I'm talking to Bear. <laughs> no, Mc, no, you talk Mc to him. Talk to me. <laughs> Get out of my shot. <laughs> oh, man. This is going to be the thumbnail. Thank <laughs> Bear, Noel McNeil, thank you guys so much for coming on the show today. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook at The Hearst Show. Follow us on Twitter at The Hearst Show. Uh, check us out on Buzzsprout, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Thank you so much again. We'll see you next week for another exciting episode. And Bear, what do we always say at the end of the show? The moon, the bear, and the big blue house, house. will be waiting for you to come, come and play. And play. <laughs> that this is so awesome. <laughs> All right everybody, good night. Good night. <laughs>